Do you ever feel like your partners are doing everything wrong in Solo Shuffle? Are we then? Dude. Seriously? How do we lose? How can we lose? As a healer, you probably had DPS that never trade their CDs and constantly line of sight you. Obviously, this sucks, and it can make raiding gains feel impossible. But why is it that players like Seadoo are able to climb on any healer, even when he has no control over his teammates' cooldowns or defensives? Of course, he plays at high MMR with good players, but in order to get there, he needed to overcome lobbies with the most troll teammates imaginable. So how did he do it? To figure this out, we sat down with a former BlizzCon champion and analyzed some VODs from the highest rated players in the world and learn three steps every healer needs to take to make it easier to play with bad players. You know healing is hard, but we promise that if you stay tuned and make these three simple changes to your gameplay, it will be possible for you to carry even the worst DPS. To kick things off, we have the biggest gameplay adjustment that you need to make right now in Solo Shuffle. If you started PvPing in Shadowlands, you probably got used to trading your defensives reactively. This meant whenever you saw the enemy team pop CDs or you noticed your teammates' health dropping low, that meant you needed to instantly trade a defensive. This is what we would consider a reactive cooldown trade since it meant using your spells in reaction to CDs or damage. Now, there's nothing wrong with this in normal 3v3 since you're usually coordinating everything with your team, which makes reactive trading easier and more efficient. But if you try and only reactively trade in Solo Shuffle, you are bound to run into some problems, the biggest one being dampening. Because healing reduction is so high, it is hard to recover your team's HP once big damage has happened. The second problem is the fact that your teammates might just fail to use their defensives when they actually need to. When you combine all of this with the insane damage output in Solo Shuffle, using your CDs reactively can already be too slow and can easily put you behind. Instead, you should make two different types of trades. For one, you will still need to use cooldowns reactively, but more importantly, you will now need to use some of your cooldowns proactively in order to keep up tempo. But what does this mean? It means instead of only reacting to enemy CDs and party health bars, you instead preemptively trade very specific cooldowns in order to prevent yourself from falling behind, which is what this rank 1 shaman does by dropping healing tide totem within 10 seconds of the game starting. This means even if he gets trapped by the enemy hunter, he will already have a cooldown rolling to prevent him from falling too far behind. The goal of trading cooldowns like this is to stay ahead and carry momentum. If you trade cooldowns more aggressively, then you don't have to worry as much about your partners failing to trade. Many DPS won't even notice you getting CC'd and will instead wait until their health drops low before they use a defensive, which can already be too late. That's why proactively trading your cooldowns is crucial, since it allows you to deal with lazy DPS. But before you start doing this with all of your spells, we have a huge disclaimer. You can't use all of your CDs proactively, but instead, there are very specific cooldowns that are worth using for the sole purpose to keep tempo. Typically, they are either CDs that offer damage reduction or increase healing output. A perfect example of this is Treeform. Many resto druids make the mistake of holding onto incarnation until the enemy team has used major offensives. But rank 1 druids, like Luxia here, will press tree form early, even without anyone at risk of dying. They do this in order to keep up with the tempo in the early stages of the game, and give their team a 30 second window to safely deal damage and stay alive even if they get CC'd. On top of this, the cooldown of tree form will get passively lowered throughout the game due to cooldown reduction, which means pressing incarnation early gives a higher chance to use it twice in the same game. Hitting this second tree form is vital, since it will typically be at a point where mana is low and dampening is high. The same is true for Pain Suppression, which is conveniently in a charge system as well. This means there is almost no reason to be greedy with its cooldown, since not only does it have an additional charge, but its CD gets lowered passively throughout the game every time the priest shields. While it might seem priests like Sidu are being reckless with their cooldowns, they are instead being smart by trading abilities proactively in order to prevent their team from dropping low while keeping them aggressive at the same time. For Disc Priest, this is crucial, since their healing output is much lower compared to other healers, and instead they get rewarded more by keeping their team on target. For evokers, this form of aggressive trading is vital since you will be actively pushed into the enemy team, making it harder to avoid CC anyway. Dream projection and time dilation are both designed to be used before any CC or major damage spikes since they increase the bulkiness of the target and help prevent them from dropping low. This is obviously different than a cooldown like Rewind, which you can only use reactively once big damage has actually happened. In any case, if you're a healer who struggles specifically against Hunters in Solo Shuffle, it is likely because you aren't proactively cooldown trading enough. The first trap of the game will be absolutely brutal unless you preemptively use a cooldown on your teammates before they drop too low. This is why Seedoo uses Pain Suppression instantly on the Intimidation, since he knows huge damage is coming. 
you can't always rely on your teammates to notice you were trapped, and in this particular case, it is up to you to be like c and make the preemptive play. Things can quickly fall apart in the early stages of the game, where the enemy team has all their DRs and CDs ready, and smart players like Vinruki know this, which is why he aggressively uses Iron Bark and Overgrowth to prevent his Paladin from dipping too low while Vinruki is harassed with CC. If he didn't preemptively use cooldowns here, his Ret Paladin would have been in serious trouble. Remember, as dampening gets higher and higher, it means damage will be more difficult to overcome. Because of this, it is better to prevent larger spikes of damage before they happen, instead of trying to recover once someone's HP has dropped low. This can even mean trading a damage mitigation CD into an ability like Glacial Spike. If no one on your team can stop its damage in deep dampening, it might be impossible to recover once the spell lands. It should be clear that proactively trading cooldowns is one of the most important things you can do to play around bad DPS. You can't count on them using cooldowns or positioning properly, which is why being more aggressive with some of your cooldowns allows you to deal with their mistakes. With enough experience, you can eventually detect when big waves of damage or CC are coming. It might seem like damage is always happening randomly, but there are key moments in every game where damage is bound to spike. Learning when these spikes happen and which CDs should be traded proactively in these moments can take a bit of time, which is why we've designed our courses to include burst healing guides that show you how and when to trade major defensives. These go hand in hand with our expansive library of arena commentaries, where rank 1 players guide you step by step through their lobbies and teach you expert level advice that you can start using to climb. In fact, we even offer a rating gain guarantee to all of our members. As long as you use our website, we promise you will rank up. So if you want to learn more about Skillcapped and all of our amazing features, be sure to visit the links below. Anyway, back to the video. Now we know how effective proactive cooldown trading is in Solo Shuffle, we need to solve the problem of DPS who drag you into bad positions. It seems like every Q session, you are bound to be chasing your DPS into the corners of every map, which means getting exposed to an abyss of CC and damage. Your plate is already full of problems to deal with, and Illidan God X isn't helping with their bad positioning. Of course, there are some essential positioning rules you should try and follow whenever you can, like staying near pillars to avoid CC. If your team gives you the luxury of being able to camp at a pillar, you should immediately take it since it will make it easier to dodge CC and avoid swaps. At some point though, your DPS will gravitate out of your radius, and sometimes even worse, they will run completely out of line of sight. When this happens over and over, you might be tempted to take your hands off your keyboard and just auto run to the center of the map and accept your fate, but there is a better solution. The trick involves saving CC avoidance tools for the sole purpose of crossing the map safely. Virtually every healer has some tool designed specifically to deny CC, which is perfect for those moments where you have no choice but to cross the center of the map. Evokers have the best tools to do so with Nullifying Shroud. Instead of burning this ability without reason, it's better to save it for moments where you have no options other than chasing your DPS through the center of the map. Shamans can do the same with both Grounding Totem and Wind Shear. You might need these to stop important casts like Chaos Bolt or Glacial Spike, which is totally fine, but you might want to consider waiting until at least one of these is ready before fully committing to chasing your partners. On most maps, the distance between pillars is small enough that you won't be exposed for that long while moving into a new place to line of sight. One exception is Tolveron Arena, where of course it will be harder to dodge casted CC on very specific places of the map. This is why proactive cooldown trading is so vital, since it allows you to overcome the fact that sometimes you just can't avoid CC no matter what. To wrap things up, we have a major trap that every healer gets baited by in Solo Shuffle, trying to be the hero. Game after game, they see their team struggling to land kills, so naturally they think it's suddenly their job to carry their team and push in for CC. So now on top of carrying their team defensively, healers are now convinced they have to carry the offensive load. Maybe their DPS even told them, hey, why aren't you cycloning? Learn to play! These are usually the same players who line of sight you and die without using defensives, by the way. But because of this constant harassment and having to deal with DPS who can't seem to CC, healers get baited into thinking they are the ones who need to start carrying on offense, when in reality it is up to the DPS to open up kill windows in the vast majority of situations, and it is the healer's job to make sure they can do that by keeping up with tempo. We've seen Resto Druids start the game with a rake stun cyclone, thinking they are making a rank 1 level play, only to get immediately CC'd themselves without any hots out on their team. So not only did the CC attempt fail, it also means they are immediately under pressure. For passive healers like Resto Druid, there is no immediate need to push into the enemy healer for CC, especially at the start of the game. Instead, you should just hang back and let your team do their job while you deal with the first wave of cooldowns, which is what Luxia does here. 
He's not pushing in and spamming out CC like he is driving to Clone City. In fact, he only goes for a Cyclone at the very end of this game, but only after there are absolutely no interrupts or stuns to stop him, which is why it's important to check Omnibar first to see what might be able to stop you. This clone winds up being a game-winning play, but it happened only when it was 100% safe. There are some more clues you can use to see when it might be safer to push into CC. Here, for instance, we can see Luxia is still on DR for both Scattershot and Freezing Trap, which means he now has a very brief window to do something aggressive, like pushing into CC the enemy healer. But once the DRs are reset, it means reverting back to conservative positioning. Of course, some healers will naturally be pushed into the fight more often. Evokers and Fist Weavers have to do this because of their limited range, but even while they are doing this, they aren't neglecting their first priority, which is keeping their team alive. So instead of overextending for a risky CC on the enemy healer, they are focusing more on keeping their team alive. Remember that DPS with spammable crowd control like mages will be constantly monitoring your positioning, waiting for moments where you are exposed in mid, and when that happens, it means you are now vulnerable to a long CC chain or potentially even a swap, which can be lethal unless you have major defenses. You should always remember that it is not your responsibility to push in and CC the healer, but instead, keep your team aggressive. Even if you play a more passive healer, you can still contribute to kills with defensive CC on off targets, or even with damage whenever possible. And when you do need to push in, remember to use your avoidance tools if needed, and be sure to proactively cool down trade. What might seem like a game-winning play can easily snowball into a game-losing mistake, especially when you're playing with bad players. But we want to hear from you. What sorts of issues do you run into when playing as a healer in Solo Shuffle? Let us know in the comments below. And before you go, we wanted to remind you that SkillCap.com is the only place that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while using our guides. So if you want to learn rank 1 level healing, be sure to visit the links in the video description. But that wraps it up for this one. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.